live on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. And guess what? We're live in the studio. Now, I've told you we've been getting the studio set up. We're on two cameras right now, soon to be three in the future, uh, just getting more things set up, and we're testing live. I've got Shay Myers. To in the studio today. Yeah, it's good to be here. And uh, he flew into Tampa. Random, I know. Random yeah. AF, everyone. <laughs> you know, what's great about this is, is we're live streaming for anyone and anybody that wants to participate, uh, whether you're on each platform, and just having a good time in the produce industry, right? Every day. That's what you're Every supposed day. to do. Yeah, you try to. Sometimes Live. it works and sometimes it doesn't. Ah, I mean, I tell everybody, right, like, living the produce you. dream, and they're like, are you sure it's not a nightmare? <laughs> And I'm like, mm, mm. well, we're going to start off with asking Shay the basic question of what do you think of the studio? Looks good. What do you it's think? It's a little Minecrafty. I mentioned that when I walked in. <laughs> it looks good, though. I've got like all my toys. You didn't even mention. These are good, though. Do these work? Do they, yeah, they're working. They're working. All right. We've got more that you, that you can't see now, but we've got the fresh juicer out of frame. We've got all of my toys, which, I, again, I cannot believe you didn't be like, what are you doing? Yeah, I did. I should have asked what you had going on there. Everybody but, everybody. But asked. I didn't know, like, really what they were that well, so I didn't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> no, I did on camera. So he didn't want to date himself. But it's like pop culture, just little fun things. Like, some people have produce items, right? I do. I got Piggly Wiggly. I got... Publix trucks, but then I have a ton of Marvin the Martian and other stupid. Yeah, I, I noticed that. Other stupid stuff. That's about the only thing I recognize. Owyhee Produce, fancy sponsor of the podcast. If you don't know Shea Myers, I'm pretty sure you're going to find out a lot more. TikTok, he's booming on it. I, I can't believe some of the videos that I watch, I swear I learn something all the time. And I was going to ask you that question because you're like, you probably don't listen to me, and it's true. I don't listen to as much as you than I watch you. Right. Okay. I still listen to it, but I watch the videos right. more because the the information that you give. I mean, right? TikTok or or Instagram swipe fifteen right. seconds. Right. The instant fifteen seconds of knowledge that you drop is what I need. Is that what you do it for why, though? Uh, no. Yeah. Why do I create the content? Yeah, cause I, I do it because it. people need to know more about where the food comes from, what it takes, how it's done, uh, how passionate we can be everything involved and the easiest way to do it is show it. So TikTok has kind of been a great transition for me to go from LinkedIn where it was always like three to five minute videos to mm. TikTok. Yep. And that's taught me how to present things in a different way. Okay. And it's been a fun way to do it. So, I mean, I think some people will find some types of content more enjoyable and others will find other types of content more enjoyable, but it's, it's just different and it's quick. Makes sense. Makes sense. I, I am now doing it for like complete fun. Oh, like, like if you haven't seen my Instagram, like uh -huh. did you see the one yeah, I did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, tagged, I tagged you yes, on, yes. on the one yeah this morning. Um, but it was like when an onion grower says he wants to meet, I'm like, I got the power. Like I'm trying to do it realistically, the, the same thing that you're doing, but I'm trying to just put it in the consumer's head, just to like, oh, that was funny. I I need to pick up bananas today. Okay. Oh, it's talking Tuesday. trying to Tuesday. make it enjoyable too. Are you trying to pull people into the industry too? No. I mean, is that even a purpose? No, not really. No. Okay. I'm really just trying to, like I said, everybody is on Instagram or even like next door, the app. There's an app called next door uh -huh. that I created a fresh produce lovers group in it, everyone. And it's my surrounding community, but I'm taking pictures at the local grocery stores and saying, here's the produce of the week at Publix. Here's some salsa at Walmart. Are you looking at some of the gold lid contests? And people are actually responding saying, oh, yeah. cool. I didn't know South Africa grapefruit was here. I thought we only had U.S. here. Well, no. Then sure. I respond back, Shay, with, well, during the summer, we bring it in from South Africa. So it's not so much as, like, like I said, of, of trying to bring them in, but I'm trying to do what you're doing is just let's educate them enough to go to the grocery store. Makes sense. All right? Uh, yeah. Because yeah. everybody's trying just, to touch just, it. Just promote the industry in general. Yeah, I yeah, mean... Not what my purpose has been necessarily as much as, I mean, the industry is cool and, the, you know, increasing consumption, but it's more about increasing knowledge, I guess. So I just took a little bit different. Angle. I, but I agree. I mean, I mean, the, the increasing knowledge, I mean, look, it's like, what platform are you on? What are you doing? How do you do it? Um, we all don't know. I mean, everybody's just trying and, and really doing R and D if you think about it. I mean, it's all trial and error. Um, I, have you ever wondered how many times we've repeated in the history of produce 
like the whole idea of, okay, I'm going to grow this crop and I'm going to sell it to this market and I'm going to make it work. Like how many times that's happened where the same commodity has grown, been grown by a different farmer in a different generation in the same way? I would say like, probably repeatedly. Like, yeah, thousands of times repeatedly, maybe. Repeatedly, over yeah. and over. Well, I mean, think about it. What about the the companies that leave the big boys, right? I'm not going to say any of their names. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they start a produce brokerage themselves. Mm -hmm. And all they do is say, I'm going to buy onions and I'm going to sell them to my old customer, Walmart. Yep. And then, boom, it turns into something where it's like, aren't there companies doing that already? Yeah, yeah, aren't there? Yeah, like, right? We do the same thing over and over. You yeah. know, it's, you know, sometimes one thing that I, I've noticed in our industry, and we're getting really, like, deep into the industry on this one, is that you do get a lot of these companies that start their, you know, they start their own company. I mean, heck, I'm one of them. I started a brokerage off of my family organization. Um, I always say that was for survival, everyone, just so we're clear. I had to survive. <laughs> um but it's like we came up with a concept of quality first, right? And I get like, oh, everybody's like, oh, yeah, yeah, but that is. But there's a difference in that because if you actually perform, that is. That a, is something. That, that's the substitution cost. It takes it out of it, right? They're like, okay, boom, got it. You look at the quality, you're going, boom, less, less um, coals, less rejections. Like then you, if you're a buyer, you start thinking like, oh, yeah. This, this doesn't just save me on one load. It saves me uh, throughout. So I, I agree. I always thought that was very interesting, too. And even yeah. every year, don't you think that your crop's going to be perfect to sell to everybody, too? Yeah, and our crop always is perfect every year to sell to everyone. I don't know if you're <laughs> uh, Like they say, your kids are ugly and your produce are diamonds. Okay? Yeah. Some kids are ugly. I just want to be real with all of you out there. <laughs> but not produce. There not are, our produce. There are some ugly kids Our onions out are all there. perfect. There's yes. ugly produce. There's companies called the, like ugly produce companies, aren't there? There are. So why the heck are you in Florida besides seeing me? We're in Florida because we sell onions in Florida. Uh, figuring out how to take care of a customer. So we came down and checked out some stores and some repacking and just trying to solve a problem. We're really here to solve a problem. I mean... We, we, you, you talked about quality, right? Yeah. I always have this saying that's quality service. This isn't, I obviously didn't make this up, but quality service price. Do you know what the rest of the yeah. saying is? No. Quality service price. Choose two. Pick two. <laughs> quality service or price, but you have to pick two. You can never have all three. No. You, you no, can no, accidentally no. have all three. You can have on occasions have all three, but you can't have quality service and price on your produce every time. You got to pick the two that you want. So this customer in particular has chosen there too so we're here to make sure that we can close the loop and that's and that makes, makes it so niche too sometimes in what you're selling is that one customer will pick quality and price right, right. And, and yeah exactly oh and then the other customer might pick price over quality right so it just depends i mean i've noticed i noticed that when i've been traveling i've been traveling a lot lately that I have been noticing that different retailers care about different things. Different wholesalers care about different things. And it's so interesting because you could say, oh, what's your price or what is They give you a price and you're like, oh, I could do that. You know what I mean? Not, you know, it's because it's like, what do you mean? How can you even tell me? And right. then, like I said, on a completely different person, same area, you could say, how's this sound? And they're like, you are so far. Right. You're not even close. Off the ballpark that, you know, it isn't. So onions, are you, so I assume imports. Do we grow onions no. in Florida here? A lot of onions? No, 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 we're sending them from Idaho over to here. So, oh, they're coming straight down. Yeah, yeah, just straight, coming straight over here. But yep. Cal, what about when the Idaho switches to okay, California? Okay, so the seasonality in the U.S., just a quick uh, onions 101, since that's what I do all the time. Typically, you'll find uh, onions in from Idaho, Oregon, or Washington from the northwest the months of August through mid-April, roughly. And okay. then in April, you're going to go to Southern California, to the Imperial Valley. And then in June, you're going to go to the Central Valley. And then uh, at the same time, you're potentially shipping out of uh, Vidalia, Georgia, like the Vidalia varieties out of Georgia. And you're also going to be shipping out of New Mexico and Texas. So gotcha. there's basically the Northwest covers the majority of the onions for the United States for about nine months of the year. Wow. And, and then, then, then there's some imports, but typically some imports. you've got some, you know, Peruvian. Because I heard Peruvian some. starting. Yeah, the, yeah Peru Peru the Peruvians are starting. Yeah, Peruvian starting. You know, I heard from someone, um, and tell me if this is true, because I know you do asparagus. Mm -hmm. Are Is most, or, or what percentage of asparagus is actually grown in the United States of America versus coming in from Peru or Chile? Wow, uh, I, can, I can only answer it from the perspective of California. Okay. Okay, because I don't know on a national level, I don't know those numbers well enough, but I can tell you that 
Um, less than 10 years ago, there were 26,000 acres of asparagus grown in California. Wow. And what do you think the number is today? See how many of my videos you've been watching? Mm, can you give me a hint if it's up or down? Oh, it's way down. I was going to say like 19. How about 600 acres? What? From 26,000. I meant 19 acres, not 19,000. I meant right, 19. 19. Yeah. I meant 19. I was close, so just so we're, yeah. we're clear. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that gives you an example of how much of the volume has shifted south. And why has it shifted south? To continue my one-on-one? Labor. 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 Yep. That, A. Hey, he, he knows I know that one. Yeah, I know that one. And that's true. Labor is one of the biggest things. And I've told people uh, all the time, I said, you know, the immigrants dominate the labor market. Mm -hmm. But go back to everything we have problems with, which is getting immigrants here right. is another problem. It's another. And it's not even, but it's not the availability anymore. And no, it's the, I know, it's the politics of it. Yeah, exactly. It's the cost. <laughs> it, it's the cost. It's, that's what it is. Yeah. And like I said, when I, when I lived in California for geez, 28 years of my life or, or more, um, it was funny because I would always ask my dad. I would say, how come we're not out there uh, picking? He goes, go ahead. And I was like, what do you mean? He said, go ahead. Right. He goes, you did it when you were a kid. He goes, pay peace rate. Go ahead. Right. I said, okay, dad, one up you, man. Go out there. I came back. I was like, nope, nope. And even the efficiency, most people don't know that when you go to pick an orange, there's a technique to even picking an orange off a tree. And if you don't know that, you're going to be able to tug of war with a tree, right? And there's a lot of things that, you know, it's a skilled labor. It's no skilled difference labor. than a car mechanic, a plumber. I mean, it is a skilled labor to know mm -hmm. how not to screw up the tree, the vine. Yeah, trees the, would be scary. Like, think about it. And, and we're in Florida, so I mean, there's things like, you know, I know you're in Idaho and you have, you know, crazy things too, but you got these banana spiders down here. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. I hate spiders though, but. Brown recluses. Yeah. And these things, I don't know about the brown recluse, but this banana spiders, they live in those orange trees. I remember when I was 15 years old, my dad had set us out to go pick okay, oranges. Okay, but a banana spider just for, is, is it poisonous? I, like a recluse? I have to, probably not, but it doesn't matter. I'm, it's like big and scary. It's, dude, I hate spiders, so it, right. It's yeah. like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's big, it's, 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 it's scary, it's, it's big. big. And scary. Like, so we're at, I'm picking oranges, and this was like in Claremont, and uh, I remember reaching up and I swear, everybody, it was like, have you seen, like, The Hobbit? Or, like, have you seen, like, the movies where these spiders, like, the, like what is the other ones? There's The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, there's uh, Harry Potter. Harry Potter, where they're, like, running after you? Yeah. That's what I saw, everyone. I looked into this thing's eyes, and I was like, no. I mean, they're, they're big, bro. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. can get good size, their legs, and the way they call it a banana uh -huh. is their little bodies are kind of shaped like a like a, okay. like a banana. That's freaky. Um, we just get big old garden spiders that are like that. And they're freaky. Yeah. They're freaky. They're freaky deaky, man. I don't like them. But yeah, but going back, my dad would always say, like, no, he's like, this market is dominated by immigrants. A lot of our produce community is dominated by immigrants. A lot of people don't know that. I including... If you think about the verticals, like people move up in produce a lot. That's people, some people don't recognize that. Like a lot of the salespeople started in the warehouse doing the most basic of jobs and worked their way up. Yep. Forklift driver to, you know, to sales to sales manager or even sometimes in the fields. It, they'll, they'll work their, their way up to managing the crews and, you know, taking over the process in the field. Oh, 100%. Yeah. There, uh, trust me, I, I mean, when I started with my dad, it was he owned his own business. So it's like you always did whatever they said. It was either filing paperwork, right. taking messages down. And it was back, I mean, you, you and I you were the same age. Faxes for him? Yeah. So we would, yeah. my dad would have two phones, and he would be like, one, I remember the line, the cord. Dude, he bought like a 50 foot cord. So he could be walk around? So he could walk around. That's exactly so he could walk around. And then that way, my other brother would kind of be inside this, uh, it was a nook, is where his office was. It was a nook. It wasn't a real, real office in our house. And then if he needed papers filed or faxes, like that, that's where. We would be, and he'd be walking in and out of the kitchen with this long string back and back and forth. But yeah, it's for all you kids out there that phones you step to plug into the wall. Plug into the wall. My kids know about those phones. Every time I see a pay phone, I take them. I said, "Hey, you know what that's for?" My son's like Superman. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, there's no booth. He's like, doesn't matter. He's like, Superman picks up that phone. I'm like, You're, I'm like we've lost it. We've lost it, everyone. I have Shay Myers here in the studio in Tampa, Florida. Having a good time? 
Good time. Are you sure? Good place. It's too humid here. It's too humid. Do the pads work? Let's check again. Check one, two. One, two. They work. Okay, hold on, hold on. Check one, two. Oh, I heard that. Yeah. All right, Shay, so I was talking with Maddie Fisher earlier today, yeah. and she's just like, so Shay's coming? And I was like, that's the plan. And she's like, well, what are you going to ask him? And I was like, that's a great question. I was like, we're going to wing it. And she's right. like, I think I have some questions. And I was like, she's like, so we're going to see if you know. Now, you see him on the screen, but right. don't. Do I need to stop looking? Okay, I'll stop don't, look, don't worry about the answer. All right. All and right. don't guess the answers. Okay, all right. So we're going to ask a couple onion questions because Mr. Onion 101 just got me with the acreage of asparagus, even though it wasn't onions. It wasn't onions. If you'd asked me about the, the sunscreen on the onions, I could have told you. Okay. If you could have right. asked me about the seeds. How about, how about citrus in Florida? How many fewer acres are there today? Than... Oh, that I can't tell you the exact uh, okay. amount, but it's millions. Trust less. me. Millions less, yes. Okay. Millions right. less. Try to get me on That's citrus. Right. Put him on the spot. On citrus. I do know, though, that the Roe family that, I, that is also a sponsor, though, mm -hmm. they're continually growing more each year. They're taking out the varieties that are really, uh, the uh, um, Asian citrus sale is killing. Okay. And they're putting in different tangerine okay, varieties. Okay, so I'm interested that are about that. I was just talking about the guy that's with me. Devin's with me traveling. I know I'm, going, I'm digressing, so you can take this out if you want. What happened? Because the, 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 well, what? To the, to the citrus industry in Florida. Like, no, nobody, okay, but nobody, no regular people know that. I oh, yeah, know that. so not a lot of people know. I mean, and they've changed it really to ACP because you want to know what it's really called? What's it really called? Hong Long Bing. And you know oh. where the disease is from? I would guess China. China. <laughs> okay. China. Hong but Bing. there's politics, obviously, right. involved. So, I mean, there's a lot of problems there. But uh, that being said, it came over years ago, ye like decades ago, or... decades ago. Okay. Okay. And so, you know, a little bug got here. And for some reason, it just loves our citrus trees. And then what someone did was they said, hey, let's ship Florida citrus to California. And they did the same thing. And guess what? That bug spread into states that now have problems such as Texas, Arizona, Arizona. and California. So Asian citrus psyllid, or now we just call it the ACP. Okay. Political. You know All what right. I mean? Call okay. it ACP. ACP. But it's Asian AOC. citrus psyllid, and uh, Hong Long Bing is what it's called. I've, I've lobbied for years with California um, when I lived there about you know putting up nets for these bugs trying to create another bug to kill that bug like like anything you can think about they're trying to get rid of it because it is killing all citrus all and, citrus. and so there's varieties that are more resistant yeah, resilient exactly okay. but you so, got to change all those permanent trees but you out. take out the permanent trees okay. reroute reground clear it up boom let soil you know what do they call it per year let it um Regain like its soil, you know, when your nutrients levels. Okay. And then, yeah, replant again. So, Quentin and Fallow. Noble, uh, fallow, is that what it's called? Fallow. Thank you, you. Leave it. Yeah, leave it fallow for a year. Leave it fallow for a year and then replant a different variety. Don't go planting the same variety. Plant a grapefruit, plant tangerines, plant something else, right? Okay. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of what's happening with, with citrus. But like I said, the Roe family is putting in their new variety, which is the Juicy Crunch, which is the tangerine. Okay. They have 1,200 acres now. Wow. Okay. And that, that, that is more resilient. And it should profitable. be fine. Okay. Good looking fields. Cool. You're always going to have the, you know, you're always going to have it. It's a living organism. I mean, think about it. it it's, you just have to manage it. There you go. So, all right. So let's get to some onion questions, everyone. Onion 101 for Shay. This is like onions 107. You, this is like when you've graduated, you'll know these answers. And Shay knows these answers. So. What Beatles song has onion in the title? What Beatles song has onion in the title? That's bad. I don't know. <laughs> the Glass Onion from the White Album. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I don't need to know this stuff. Okay, this is right. for you. Right, well, if you call us and we put you on hold, you can hear the Susan, I believe it's Susan Collins song. And, on and, your, and, and in Oahu? At Oahu Produce. We need to change that. You need yeah, to have Glass it's, it's, Onion. It's, it's onions, onions. The White album okay so next let's go to another all right a single serving of onion contains how many calories and guess it because i know you already saw it yeah what yeah. did you think it was i would have guessed like 70 calories 70 70 and but then you're gonna put butter in it so you're adding like another 40 no calories. we're talking about a straight a straight buck naked onion where you can just eat it if you, I, I okay so you were thinking 70. 70 45 everyone so if you get the buck naked onions which are the sweet onions you can eat the whole thing. There you go. 45 calories. Done. Which I've seen him do. 
and I, I've done as well. <laughs> Trust me. And, in, in, and it's, te it's tearless. You're talking about the Wicked Sweet. The Wicked Sweet. Wicked one. Sweet. Yeah. Yes. That one's the awesome. Wicked Sweet Red. Those are awesome. Yeah. Those are part of the Buck Naked, aren't they? Yeah, we can peel them. But normally not peel. Psh, I'd peel them. I mean, I did peel it when I, before I ate it. Yeah. I ain't going to lie to you there. I'm not eating that stuff. All right. Okay. I like this one. What cocktail is traditionally garnished with a pearl onion? Um, I, uh, I saw the answer on there, but I would have said there's, there's, an, there's one that has asparagus and onions sometimes. What? Both. I, the garnish on a Bloody Mary. All right. I could give you that. All right. But the the Gibson or whatever that is, I've never even heard the of that. The Gibson. You gotta remember that I don't even drink, so this is. I don't drink so either. Eat, eat, I don't for drink me either. To be able to get the the Bloody Mary. You know what you the know only the you know, only drink I, I well don't get me wrong I know a lot of drinks but like the one that comes to mind all the time when people talk about like veggies in it I always go for that dirty martini because it's got two olives in it. <laughs> That's all I know. I'm like James Bond that. I'm like James Bond it with the double dirty, extra dirty martini. I don't even know what it means when they say it's dirty. I don't know. You don't know either? Shaken, not stirred, or whatever. Is that what you're trying to get at? I don't even... You don't you know I know what shaken, not stirred means, but dirty versus... I know, I know, but... Oh, is that what it means? If it's dirty, I, that's I, what it means? No, it's no, I'm not, no, shaken? no, I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know either. I don't know. Well, okay, so according to the web tender, an online bartender... The gent of the jury, a patent martini, pan galactic, gargle blaster number two, and the yellow rather also call for a cocktail onion. Good. What? Did you I know any of these? No, I knew none of them. I knew none of these. None of them. I knew none of these. I honestly, I, yeah. I mean, my go-to when I did used to drink. Uh huh. You want to know what it was? Something really like frou frou. -y. Oh, you know it. You know, uh, listen, <laughs> I love me a good lemon drop. I'm just saying lemon drop or a mimosa. And I would always ask for when I did my mimosa. Sure, you would do a mimosa. I would be like, like you're, yeah, grapefruit juice. Guy. I'd be like, do you have grapefruit juice? And they'd be like, yeah, like mimosa with grapefruit juice. Do you have do you have carrot carrots? Yeah, carrot carrot. Like I would just try. Then you get the restaurants that didn't have fresh, and they would say it's pre-made. I'd be like, oh, no, thank you. I'm good. All right, so next we got, oh, okay, oh, whew, had to jump that one real quick. All right, how, oh, you're an onion farmer. Yeah. Let me ask you the question. How many acres of onions do you manage in your uh, collective for the pack of uh, Okay, so about 1,500 acres. 1,500 acres. Okay, so the question is, how many onion farmers are there in the United States? I would say, like, it depends on how you qualify that. We're going to say... Because of the size, right? Um, but, but let's say probably the, what she, what Maddie went and looked up was probably what was probably registered. Okay, registered on your gross. 700, okay. maybe, total in the U.S. And it might even be closer, nah, seven, eight hundred. You're probably close because it's less than a thousand. Okay. So less than a thousand growth, probably operations or people that actually register. Because there are, there's a lot, trust me, I've seen a lot of like five acre farms right. in California where it's registered under, you know, Patrick and Renee Kelly, you know, or right. whatever it might be. Family LLC. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or their house is on it. Right. And if they don't even have an LLC. It's just their property and they get it picked. I know people like that, that pomegranates and other things that they're just like, no, it's my house. Yeah. So... All right, we'll give you that one. If we were to say right now you're at, you've gotten two wrong. Or did you get the other one wrong? Too? Yeah, three wrong. Well, three, three wrong. wrong. We're going to give you this one because that was pretty close. I mean, less than a thousand. Oh, Guinness World Records. Oh, okay. Is this the heaviest onion? The world's, okay. So according to the Guinness Book of World Records, just to clarify everyone, it's not Guinness Book anymore. More, it's Guinness World Records. I have one right up there for the podcast, just so we're clear, everyone. Guinness World Records. How much did the largest onion ever grown weigh? Twenty-two pounds. There's no way. Have you ever grown that? What's, there? What's the, the largest onion you've ever grown? The grown? largest onion we've ever. We did a super colossal one time. This whole field had uh, a very, very poor stand, and we were doing. 11 count 50 pound bags of super colossal onions so I mean, almost five pounds a piece i mean i remember like that so one four four and a quarter four and a half but that's, that's realistic 
Yeah, five pounds. Yeah, it's yeah, like because that's like that one that I had. Remember that one I sent you a picture of? That was almost as big as my head. Like it was like mm-hmm. in 2020. Mm-hmm. That one was huge. And I, yeah. I think even you even told me you're like that was one of your normal onions too. Was, I thought it was huge. Okay, just see if I'm right. 22 pounds. 18 pounds, okay. 11.84 ounces. You're off by what? You're talking about one and one and a half pounds, pretty much. It's pretty close. It was grown by Tony Glover in the United Kingdom. Well, that's why. Yeah, if you go look, we back, need, look Google that. If you look the guy, yeah, well, he's growing him in a greenhouse. He's way up north. What about the United States? Yeah. I want to know that. You could bowl the record. Right. You know what? There I might thought be it was a, the biggest one was from Alaska. Do you so think okay. you could get the Guinness World Record in over 18 pounds? I don't know. I could try. Grown outside? Not grown outside, but it doesn't say outside. Oh, okay. All right. Next question. What should you eat to get rid of onion breath? Milk. That's not an eating. Are you giving me an answer? I mean, Larry, did you want me to No, that was just something I came up with. Because milk takes away like anything. Listen, you got milk breath? That's like the worst. (laughs) Right? Tomato juice. Ooh. Tomato juice. That's horrible. That would be. I that mean, would, what do you want me to say? That would take it just so I'm supporting you, or what? No, orange juice probably wouldn't. It probably that'd yeah. probably be a bad mixture, Mm-mm. unless they're cooked already. You know what I mean? Like in an omelet. Yeah, that's juice. fine. Parsley. What should you eat to get rid of onion breath? Parsley, everyone. I didn't. Google has all kinds of answers. I bet we could find one where it says to you know have milk. If we Google, you know, will will milk work to get rid of onion breath? I mean, it'd probably just make your breath smell worse. Like, I'll be real with you. I try to get rid of my Brussels sprout breath. That don't work either, man. People will be like, do you have Brussels sprouts today? I'm like, three days ago, man. <laughs> I'm like, three days ago. Like, I brushed my teeth, but for some reason, that Brussels sprout, man, it stays with you for a couple days. I'm telling you. I love, I love Brussels sprouts, everybody, if you know me. So, all right, next. How many more questions do we have? Oh, no. Okay. This is last question, everyone. Last question. What compound in onions brings tears to your eyes? Oh, that's, you should know this. That's an onion 101. That's right an there. onion 101. That is an uh, onion 101. I don't know the, the exact, but it's, it's, a, it's based in sulfur. Um, sulfuric acid is the combination that, that it creates. There's salt in your eyes combined with the sulfur that comes off the onions creates so and it's sulfur. It's it's a con- a basic of uh, uh, sulfuric acid. So it's a pretty yeah. So it's so it's not the onion. It's not the onion. The onion is the salt. So it's the salt in your eyes. But there's sulfur. Gas but still, it's a, a, it, that's what I'm saying. So it's the it's, it's a the, combination of um, the periodic, your, there's the periodic table. <laughs> it's a combination of like I said, gas, water, right. salt, and that's what makes right. your your eyes burn. Right, so it's not the onion itself. Horrifically, it's, everyone. It's what you have, you know, the salt in your eyes. But when you look this up, it may not be sulfuric acid. So we sulfuric something. That's interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. I didn't so, know. So well, what's the answer? I might know. Oh, I don't know. It's going to be. You I, just assumed that I knew the answer, but it's going to be sulfuric something. I okay. thought we were just having a conversation at this point. I totally I forgot. I totally forgot about the answer. answer. I'm not going to lie to you. I was like, what? Okay, sulfuric uh, compounds. All right. To cut down on the crying, chill the onion and cut into the root end of the onion last. Is that true? Mm, I think that's baloney. Now, cooling it down does. Cooling it down does. It does help? Yes. Yes. But, but all my onions are in the fridge, and I'll tell you, they still... They still make you cry. It's the t- easiest thing, the easiest, it's, it's the, the gases. So if you can put it, I think the best hack that I think might actually work, and we do this in our peeling room at Buck Naked, is... We ventilate the room, like we pull the air up and out. So you can go over to your, depending on the type of uh, stove, like the ventilation you have over your stove. Mm-hmm. But if you have good suction there, like to pull the steam or the smell off of your food from your stove, go over to your stove top, put your cutting board there, cut it there, turn, make sure the fan's on before you do it. Okay. And I don't think you'll have tears. Really? Yeah. Now I'll be Unless you have the kind that like goes up and then just filters it and kicks it back out of your uh, kitchen. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you have the kind of hood that sucks it up and out, you know, I think it'll work. It makes sense. But test, test it and then let me know. Well, let me ask you another question. When you pickle onions, does the crying of the eyes go away when you open the bag? Absolutely. Even if you even if you take the onion, cut it, put it in your fridge, and just like let it sit for a while anywhere on your counter, it shouldn't make you cry again. That's one thing that I, that I will say. So I, I make omelets almost probably four days a week um, mm-hmm. in the mornings. 
and obviously go to onions, right? Sweet peppers. Um, but what I did was, so one of the first day, Asparagus. my omelets, I've got someone that keeps telling me I gotta have more microgreens in my diet. Um, I'm not gonna tell you that's a greenhouse, should I? Cause it is. <laughs> um, but I, I, what I'll do is I'll cut the onion. My wife's always like, why do you cut the whole onion up? And I'm like, I'm just getting it all out of the way. One, just get it over with. but then yeah, like it's just done. It's not just the fact of cutting it, but if you keep, I feel like if you still keep the other half of it shelled and everything, you're gonna cut into it again and it's gonna do the same thing. So I cut it all up in one and I'll put all the onions in a Ziploc baggie, all cut and ready to go uh, for the week. I'm like the prepper. One more hack on that too. So when your recipe calls for an onion, like a half a medium onion, mm -hmm. now this helps me sell onions, okay? So, you know, I'll, I'll use that qualifier. Horrible but salesman. use the whole onion. Seriously, it's gonna make, in most recipes, like if you doubled the onions in your omelet recipe when you're cooking them, I bet you would barely notice the difference. So if you don't want to waste the onion and throw it away, which a lot of people do because they don't want that smell in their fridge, just cut it up and use it all at the same time. Just double the, the quantity if you're cooking it. If you're raw, don't do that. Like if you're going to do like salsa or pico, but if you're doing a soup recipe or an omelet recipe or whatever that's called in, calling for cooked yellow onions, just put the whole onion in there. Well, I'll tell you what, I do that with my peppers. I'm a huge pepper fan. I will cut up half a pepper, like whole pepper, half, and I'll cut the whole half in, and then my onions like a quarter I did. But I think that's why is because I'm expecting it to be different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you're right. I should probably, my wife is opposite. She wants more onions than she wants peppers. Like, you know when you go to like the Japanese steakhouses mm -hmm. yeah. and they have the hibachi going and like, dude, like she wants to, like she wants to eat the full thick like onion, bro. Right. I saw it, they saw it like, two days ago, trust me. <laughs> I saw her eat it. I was like, I need my cut up tiny to eat those. But you're right, you, I probably wouldn't even notice. I don't think you'd notice. It tastes, and my wife tells me sometimes that, especially if you're like sauteing onions and that's part of your recipe, she'll even tell you the more the better because she says that a lot of times they shrivel up, like when you cut them, and they'll shrivel up really small, and a lot of times, again, don't judge me on a cooker, they'll get stuck to the pan and things like that. So she'll be like, no, I always throw like the whole onion in because you're gonna lose some of that onion in. I like and the better already. And the flavor, and the flavor, yeah. she loves the flavor of it, so she's like, it, like, I'm not promoting onions here, just that's my wife, because I'm the guy, like, literally, I will do a quarter onion, and she's like, put more onions in. Seriously, like, that's her. All right, so try it, and <laughs> let everybody know. I don't know, it's more onions, it's more onions. All right, everyone, Shay, it's been great to have you here in the studio, I'm glad you were able to stop by, and there's gonna be a lot of cool live interviews that we're gonna be doing in the studio. We're gonna have some cool guests, uh, just like Shay on, and uh, learn more about produce, and, you know, and talk to you about where your food comes from. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, man.